Okay, in this video I thought I'd show you where I'm at with the executable MBIC profile. The link of which is available in here, it's actually on GitHub. You put that profile into your installation and then that gives you effectively uh, this profile available in the list. So let's just, um, I'll just show you this again, I'll, I'll just use a simple mousetrap. Okay, let's take a quick look at the structure created for this functional analysis scenarios package. So the intent here is to have a package that can work on the functional analysis of a use case that's captured with textual actions and textual requirements. So the, so the currency here is going to be the requirements and the way that they are created is through a activity diagram. So what's going to happen is I'm going to consume that activity diagram in my functional analysis package. So the intent is that this package is owned by a different user than the user who owns the activity diagram. And it may actually be added by reference. So the first thing you'll notice in this scenarios package is a working copy package. And there's a little helper here, which um, based on dependencies that were created is going to pull the activity diagram as a copy and on that copy it, it does make uh, a marker here in red just so we know that this is a copy and that that means I can mess around with it I can delete stuff um, importantly there's a little helper here which will color the the actions or the event receptions based on um, me performing the processing of them for example converting this action into an event mouse enters trap coming from the mouse uh, this helper will effectively color this working copy so the original is kind of pristine um, and interestingly enough you know at the, at the time in which I finish processing this I'll, I'll just throw away the diagram um, and I'll have traceability to these requirements so that's kind of a fundamental part of the process here capturing that traceability um, Let's do the, this operation as well. Trap springs capturing the mouse. So what you'll notice here is that when I create events, they're created on a block. So I've got this blocks underscore mouse trap package. So there's a unique name given to all of these packages. So there's a root package. This is the mouse trap package, which may represent a system or it may represent a feature it could represent a use case um, I leave that quite flexible um, but it's got a unique name and that unique name is used to create a file on the file system which is going to be unique so the blocks package is, is where the blocks that I'm essentially adding operations to representing components of the system so it's, it's the system of interest the, the things I am testing and in this case there's a single block so it's it's a black box model and um, what you'll also see is this test package so the test underscore mousetrap package here has got actors and um, these have been stereotyped just to make them clear and also the helper will use the stereotype but essentially the idea is that there's a system called the mousetrap assembly system that is assembling my block which is the mousetrap, with these actors and they are connected through essentially ports and interfaces. This is a bit messy this diagram but it, it, it is because so, it's auto drawn. This is my system block and it's connected to these actors. So this is this is the fundamental thing about the simulation structure is, is we build a system that includes the system and uh, the other parts of that system are actors and I've also got time as an actor. The helper also created a sequence diagram with those uh, lifelines with those actors and the blocks in it the blocks that represent the subject the system under test in essence because that's what we're doing we're trying to build test scenarios so that means having created this structure I can build this system assembly hence you'll see that there's a component here called the mousetrap exe and it's been set up with a configuration to enable it to build an instance of that assembly with animation and in this case it's got 
Webify enabled. And when that runs, that executable runs, it's going to talk back to the Rapster client and I've got kind of full simulation capabilities here. Within my test harness, if you like, or the design, I've got this type of actor called time and that enables enables me to control time without using timers. So in my simulations, I don't use the Rapsty sort of system timer, rather that I, I simulate time. And that, that enables you to freeze a simulation or you can move it at different speeds. This time actor can be configured to drive a simulation either in a continuous way or a, or a discrete event-driven way. So, so the structure's fairly important and, you know, okay, so it looks a bit more complex, but essentially everything that will stimulate the system is shown on the sequence diagram including the stimulus so effectively the sequence is a definition of the test cases so i'm not going to change anything in a simulation i'm not going to change anything directly on the system blocks rather that the, the stimulus always comes from an actor and that that's kind of important that was important in harmony it's important in this structure as well and then i, I can hook it into technologies such as test conductor to automatically run tests build up a test suite that can repeat the injection of the stimulus as defined on a sequence diagram. So let's look at the other elements of the structure. So the working package is basically where I can copy things and hack around with them. The blocks package is where the blocks that represent the system of interest or if it's a white box the components would go. So these are where the functions which are represented by operations and the triggers which are represented by events are captured on and value properties. I've got a separate interfaces package. Again, that's separation of the, the usage from the interface is important for multi-modeling where you've got multiple models that reference other packages in other models um, and you can bring and import packages into other models either by reference or by copy so that's going to become important and important also here is that these interfaces are captured with explicit interfaces on the ports and again that that's to do with test conductor so that's what the interfaces package is storing if you like um, so I've got my test package I've got my interfaces package I've got my blocks package and I've got this block called system assembly and the block called system assembly is higher in the hierarchy than the design package. And, and that sort of partly a usability thing. So, so um, in my test package, for example, I've got a sort of panel diagram here. And if you, if you start to use panels, when you, when you go to bind things, I want to find the system assembly first. So it's the first thing it finds. I don't bind to, directly to the blocks, I bind to an instance of the block running in the system assembly. So by putting that system assembly block higher, it, it helps with the usability here to stop you binding to the wrong elements. So um, so that's more or less the structure. The sequence diagrams, again, I put at the higher level, at the scenario package level, because really they're the, they're the outcome, the, the handoff that comes from executing and creating this functional model. So the intent is to take the events and operations that I had and put them into a state machine. So um, I've got the mouse enters trap and trap springs capturing the mouse. So essentially, I'm I'm integrating the behavior of the use case steps into a state chart which captures the same behavior at the same level but it's is sort of fully constructed and that enables me to essentially execute this behavior in a way which is integrated with the other scenarios that may be captured on other use cases or different scenarios in the same use case till I've got kind of a fully constructed definition of that behavior um, and importantly, in this behavior, I've got things like operations and events. Um, oh, I've got an error here. So start with no mouse. Let's build and run. 
yeah, essentially in this definition, I've got these elements, events and operations, which capture the functions of the system from its concept of operations as defined by the formal requirements handoff. So when I execute, uh, let, let me just stop and rerun that, see what happened. Oh, I'm not looking at the executing one. Right, here we are. So the handoff is going to be test scenarios defined that use these operations and events and also trace to the requirements. So this could be you know, test case one, trap a mouse. So that that's uh, sequence diagrams in the scenario package. So I'd have a you know twenty thirty of these perhaps in a in a handoff from a black box to white box, and the functions and operations are defined on the blocks, and these are all tracing to the requirements and they're the same requirements that were handed to me in the use case package but it's not this uh, functional model is, is a separate definition of the same behavior I've done a model transformation from an activity model into a sequence diagram <coughs> state chart model and this executes so, so that's kind of the structure Hopefully I'll do a few more videos in future when I get some time.